All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Thanks for getting up early on a Monday morning to be in your Algebra 1 class. And today we're going to continue our conversation about slopes, y intercepts, how they happen. We're going to look at three different ways today to find slopes, and you'll be working on that during your coursework this week. So I want to say good morning to everyone. Thanks for being here. And it's kind of fun to watch you all get to know each other as the course goes on. But let's get right to it, and then we'll have a chance to take a look at some examples, and then we'll go back over some of the assignments you'll have for this week and have a chance to let you ask some questions about any of the coursework that you did in the week prior. So we're going to go right to the screen and take a look at working with slopes. And so hang on, and we'll go there right now. So we're going to look at three ways to find slope. And if you remember when we talked about slope, that the slope being the steepness of a line, we want to look at all the different ways that you can find slope. Because sometimes you'll want to look at it by looking at a graph. Other times you'll want to look at it by just looking at an ordered pair with those x and y points. And, and you can work out a formula. And then other times you're going to want to just look at it and see if you can see just by looking at it as to what the slope is going to be. So there are the three ways, and if you remember what we talked about before with that triangle as a Greek letter delta, meaning the change in something, this is the change in y over the change in x. We also have that formula where we work with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And lastly, we work with the rise over the run. Now, what I found for most students is that they like rise over the run the best. So let's start with that. We're going to take these two points, and we're going to plot them on an xy coordinate plane, and then look at the rise over the run to see what the slope is. So we'll be able to have a chance to see that. Now, the first thing I'm going to see is this, is that I have my x1 and y1 point. And then I'm going to have my x2 and y2 point, which all that means is that I've got an x1 and a y1, one set of x and y's, and then a second x and a y. So I'm going to plot those points right now at the first x and first y at negative 2, positive 1. And then I'm going to put my second set of x2, y2 at positive 2 and positive 3. Now what I'm looking for is how does this going to rise over how is it going to run? And if you remember that, the rise is going to rise in a positive direction, in this case, because it's going up. And it's going up by 2. And a rise goes vertically, while the run goes horizontally, where I'm going to run in a positive 3 direction, or positive 4 direction, as I count 1, 2, 3, 4, over 2, where that point is. What that's going to tell me is that I did a rise of 2 and a run of 4. And that gives me the slope of 2 fourths, which you obviously know can reduce to 1 over 2. So now let's take a look at what that looks like using the formula y2 minus y1 so that we can see how we get the same exact slope by looking at that. And it's going to look like this, where we're going to start with the y2 value, which is going to be 3. And we're going to subtract from that the y1 value, which is 1. And then we're going to take 2, the x2 value, which is 2, minus the x1 value of negative 2. And we're going to find that 3 minus 1 will be 2. And 2 minus negative 2 is like 2 plus positive 2, which gives us 4 and creates, again, 1 half. Now, if you notice that our slopes are exactly the same, 1 over 2, 1 over 2. Now, let's take a look. Third way to look at find the slope is by looking at the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y being, I'm going to look at how are the y's changing. Well, if I look at my y, y2 to y1, it's actually going down by 2. So that's the first way that it changes. And my x values, when I look from 2 to negative 2, are going down by 4. But remember, a negative over a negative is going to be a positive 2 over 4, which again goes right back to 1 over 2. So you've now seen how to find the slope in three different ways. What I want to do now is check in, check in with you. And we're going to look at some of the problems here. But I want to see what questions you have. So guys, I'm going to type a question here. If you've got uh, what questions do you have about slope? So let's see here, guys. What what questions do you have about slope? Anything that you noticed? If you had to look and see what's your favorite way to do slope, just raise your hand if you like doing the rise over the run the best. How many of you like doing rise over the run out of the three ways doing that the best? You guys, OK, good. How about doing the change in y over the change in x? How many of you like doing the change in y over the change in the x the best? You do, Kenna? OK, good. <laughs> So Maria, I'm going to take a guess that for you, you actually like doing the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. OK, great. Well, you know, the great thing about math is this, is that when you're doing any kind of math problem, what's great about it is this, is that there's always more than one way to do it. And you can see by doing the slope, we can do it three different ways. And you can find the way that works for you. That's excellent. All right, guys. Well, what we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at some more coursework. And we'll keep going.